Hey gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and today I'm going to show you how to solo PAX Premier 2nd Edition. It's designed by Cole Worley, and we are going to be showing off a solo variant designed by Richard Wilkins, better known as Ricky Royal. So here we are, we are hanging out in Afghanistan after the fall of the Durrani Empire. We are representing Afghan families who are trying to make the most of a difficult political situation. And we are going to be shifting our loyalties between the three empires that are sort of fighting over our area. So at various points in the game, we might be loyal to the British. We might be loyal to Afghanistan. Or we might be loyal to the Russians. And we can buy gifts and do different things to kiss up to our various leaders before we, of course, will then switch loyalties and start to build up all over again. The goal of this game is to be the one who has the most dominance points. And we are going to be checking for points at every dominance check that we come across during the game. They're up to four. The game ends if at any point one player is four or more points ahead of another one after a score check. So rather than throw all the rules at you at once, this game is fairly simple. It's just that it has complexities that build as the game goes. So I'm going to be talking about my thought processes as we play against Wakan, who is our opponent in this game. She is an AI deck who, while lacking the subtlety of a human player, makes up for it, and perhaps more than makes up for it, with brute force. Our lovely friend Wakan here has two cards that will track her priorities and her gifts. I'm going to put these off a little bit to the side so that her AI deck can be the star of the show visually right here. But we have her priority list and the gifts that she can give. Most of Wakan's turns will be run using these cards. When you flip one, it interacts with the back of the card that was next in the deck. I'll give those a shuffle and set them out. Now I'm going to show you how to set up the market just so that you know how to do it for your own games. The first thing you're going to do is take your regular court cards. We'll have some special ones that we shuffle in, in a moment and you put out six piles of them. And in those six piles, there are going to be seven cards each. It's five cards is the base amount plus one for each player. One of them is us and the other is of course Wakan here. Now that we have our six piles of seven cards each, we are going to set out the special dominance and event cards that will go into the deck. So the first thing we're gonna do is take these four red dominance check cards and we're gonna put one in each of these piles that is furthest to the right. Next, we're gonna take our events and we're gonna shuffle them up because you don't see every single event every turn. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put one event card in each of the four rightmost piles and then two in the fifth pile from the right. Nothing special goes into this pile. Then we're gonna make our larger draw deck and we're gonna do that by shuffling each of these individual piles and then making one big stack out of them with this one on the bottom and this one on the top. Congratulations, we now have a draw deck. So we're going to put out our starting market and then we can start talking about our player setups and how to actually get the game started. But what you'll do is starting from the leftmost column, moving over, we're gonna fill up the columns with cards. So I have put all of our cards out. I've also given Wakan and me each four starting rupees. This is a game that has an extremely tight economy. And part of what that's going to mean is that um, there's really only eight coins in the game unless Wakan and I manage to play cards that put more money into the system. But our cards are out and now I need to choose my starting loyalty. So the way that loyalty works in this game is that you choose one at the beginning based on what you think you can do well with, and then you can change it at various points during the game, but there's specific ways in which you can do so. So you'll notice that these are color coded. So British is pink, Afghanistan is green, Russia is yellow. So we have these blocks that match these colors. So Russia, Afghanistan, and Britain. These guys with the colored stripes over their names are called Patriots. And if you play one, your loyalty will immediately switch to the nationality of the Patriot that you just played. So if I'm British, but I play Prince Akbar Khan, then I will immediately switch my loyalties over to Afghanistan. 
If, and if I should choose in my next play to be Count Ivan over here and put him in my uh, in, into my tableau, then my loyalty would switch from Afghan to Russian. And as you collect cards and buy presents and stuff for these empires, uh, every time you change loyalties, you end up giving up a little bit more. Because if you have a lot of patriots out for one empire, then when you switch to another one, you have to get rid of all of those cards. So these guys can't both be in my play area, in my court. I have to have one or the other. So if I have him out, but then play this guy, then this one will leave. The other stripe that's sort of interesting to note is see these bottom stripes down here that have just the symbol and the color of, a very, of an empire? These are prizes. And what that means is that if you manage to betray and assassinate one of these cards with one of your spies, then you flip them and put them under your loyalty dial as a sign that you've won a prize to please a certain empire. And if you take, say, a Russian prize, then your loyalty will once again switch and you will be loyal to Russia no matter who you were loyal to before you decided to take that betray action and accept that prize. So I'm looking out right now and deciding who I want to be loyal to. There's a lot of options. Uh, I see several Afghan prizes, which is not bad. There are a bunch of British patriots and there are a couple of Russian patriots as well. So this is basically anything could go nicely for me here. I think that I want to go British because it just looks like there's a lot of British options. I also like that these British cards have a bunch of different actions on them that I could take. So on a basic turn, um, your base actions are purchase a card, and play a card, and those are two separate actions. Uh, but as you gather more cards in your tableau, there are more actions that you're allowed to take, and that's something that is worth thinking about as you go. And we will talk through each of those actions as I choose to take them during the game. So I'm gonna say that my initial loyalty is gonna be British. Let's say that we're British. Let's hope. The first player in this game, however, is gonna be Wakan. She's gonna get her first choice on the board, and she's gonna make a lot of trouble. So one thing I'll say up front is if you wanted to see a video about how to play well at PAX Premier, I am not sure that you're about to see that. Wakan is a very tough opponent. I can, however, walk you through the technicalities of how the game works. I'm still learning to play it masterfully, but I can play it. All right, so to play Wakan turn, all you do is flip the first card. I'm gonna walk you through the anatomy of her card actions really quick, and then we'll actually play her turn. So, What's going to happen is that a Wakan card will have three potential actions for her on it, and you just move through the actions from top to bottom until she's able to take two. So she can't move or betray right now because we don't have the board set up for that, but she can radicalize. So what's going to happen is we'll be like, no, no, yes, no, no, yes, and she's going to end up radicalizing two cards. We'll talk a little bit more about what that means in a moment. She also has a loyalty up here. So Wakan has what's called pragmatic loyalty, which means that during a dominance check, she's loyal to everyone and will get points. But when she's playing against us, she's loyal to whichever empire is left most that we're not loyal to. So her pragmatic loyalty for this turn is to the Afghans because we just declared ourselves as British. The arrows on this and on the back of this other card will help us determine which cards Wakan would like to purchase from the market. And when we're doing things that involve, say, building roads to different regions, Wakan will have different priorities. So let's walk slowly through Wakan's turn. Again, move would involve there being cards for her to move between or armies for her to move around on the board. And she doesn't have either of those. So move is sort of out of the question for now. Betray is also out of the question. In order to betray, you have to have a spy on top of a card and then use the spy to murder the card, basically, which is how you win prizes, by the way. Radicalize is an action that is unique to Wakan and that we as players do not have access to. Because remember, we're just normal people. Wakan is a movement. She's an ideology. So when she radicalizes, what that means is that we have to purchase a card and then play it as two separate actions. When Wakan radicalizes a card, she gets to take it off the market and play it to her tableau immediately because that is her right as Wakan. So she can't move and she can't betray it, but she absolutely can radicalize. There are no special instructions for her to radicalize, so we're actually going to follow the ones that are on the card backs here. So this red arrow is pointing to bottom, which means that we are gonna purchase off of the bottom row. And then you can see where this black arrow matches up with column number three. So Wakan is going to purchase the third card in the bottom column. So the way that you purchase cards in this game 
is you place a rupee on each of the cards that are down the row from the market card that you're purchasing. So for example, Wakanda is going to buy a three value coin, uh, three value card. So she's going to go one, two, three. She's going to purchase the card and she's going to place the card. So Wakanda is immediately going to be able to do a specific thing, which is the actions in the top right of the card. See these symbols that look like little cylinders that are on top of cards? That is in fact what they are. Wakanda is going to get to put out two spies on a, on a card that says Persia. So if I had a Persian card, she might come to me. But as it stands, she's going to have to put two spies on her own card. So what's important about this is not just that she has spies out and spies can do betray and killing actions. Well, the other thing is that Wakanda now has cylinders out. So there are two ways to score points in this game. One is to be a member of the dominant coalition during a dominance check. So I'm British. I don't want the Afghans or the Russians to be winning any dominance checks in this game until I switch, or I might switch if I think if I think that I see the writing on the wall. Because if you if there is a dominant faction during a dominance score check and you're not in it, then guess what? You don't get any points. I would immediately lose to Wakan because Wakan is loyal to everyone. If we have no clear dominance for any of the factions, what will then occur is that we will determine who gets the most points based on who has the most cylinders out because they represent your personal power in Afghanistan. So Wakan has gotten two of her 10 cylinders out and I have none. So right now she has more personal pull in the area than I do. And that's basically what that means. So now Wakan gets to take a second action because Radicalize was one action. So she's gonna ratchet up pretty quickly and then we're gonna have to huff and puff to catch up with her. So move, Wakan technically could move at this point because she has two flags here, which means that she can take this move action. So you can't do anything in this game unless you have an action on a card that lets you do it. So you have to be careful about the cards that you buy. This one that looks like little explosions is a battle action. This is a move action. And because she has two stars on here, she could battle twice with this card and she can move twice with this card. However, there's nowhere to actually move her spies to and her spies don't move in this game. So um, nothing actually comes from that. Betray. Once again, you need a special action to betray. So see this knife? It costs two and a card with a betray action to actually betray anyone. So Wakan can't. So that leaves us with the option to radicalize. So that means that Wakan is going to purchase and play another card. And this is not going to be very fortunate for us, I can already tell. So what's going to happen is that she's going to buy, so her original choice was to buy a three value card here. Wakan can't pick up any of these cards. The reason that she can't pick up any of these cards is that when you buy from a row and put rupees down on a card, you cannot buy that same card back on the same turn when you put down the rupee. It's to prevent you from basically trying to game the system and get all your money back. So Wakan can't have these. So what she's gonna do instead is she's going to, she was originally interested in this card, so she'll go up a row, and then she's going to buy the most expensive card that she can, which is this guy, Joseph Wolf. So now she's bought Joseph Wolf. He's got some more actions on him, which is a little bit of a concern. And she's gonna put out another spy. This Persian card already has spies on it, so she's gonna put them on that. So now Wakan is rocking a whole bunch of Persian spies, and that was what she decided to do this turn. So she's gone, she's taken her two actions, they were two radicalized actions, and now Wakan is going to have cleanup. We need to check a couple of things. The first thing we have to check is her court size. So she has no political cards, so her court size is limited to three. So she can't have more than three cards in here after the end of a turn until she gets some purple cards with purple stars on them that increase her court size. So to explain that further, there are four suits in this game. There is the purple one, which is political, intelligence, economic, and military. Each of these has a different effect on the game when it's the favored suit. So right now, political cards are the favored suit and it would give you bonus actions if you had purple cards. So there are a couple ways in which suit affects the game. There's favored suit. So the favored suit allows you to take bonus actions on cards of that color. So if the favored suit were intelligence, which we never want to happen right now, then Wakan would not only take her two actions, but she would get bonus actions off of these cards, which would be a nightmare. We don't want that at all. We'll get bonus actions if we manage to get anything that becomes a favored suit ourselves. 
The other thing that will happen is that having cards of multiple suit of different suits will also protect you or give you various in-game bonuses. So if you have a lot of political cards, you can actually increase your court size by the number of stars that are purple in your tableau. Having a lot of blue stars allows you to increase your hand size. This is actually not as good for Wakan because she doesn't have a hand, but your hand limit is typically two, and Wakan would be able to increase her hand limit to five because she has one, two, three blue stars down here. So if these were our cards, that would actually probably be pretty nice for us, but for Wakan, it doesn't matter too much. And then the economic cards help you, they're called tax shelter. So basically in situations where you would have to pay a tax, you don't have to pay as much if you have a lot of these orangey stars in your tableau. So there are a lot of different benefits to having various suits in your tableau because each of them will give you something nice. So now the next thing that we've done is we checked her tableau size, she's fine, and we are going to adjust the market and put some more cards out. So everything slides down, all the way down to the left. And then we are going to draw two more cards to fill the market back up. Oof, we got a couple of events. So that's basically how a Wakan turn will work. She'll do some more interesting stuff as the game proceeds. These event cards are worth noting because um, they do different things depending on what you buy them. So this one, I don't really want Wakan to buy because she can make me be stuck while she enjoys lots of free blue actions. But basically, if you buy this event, you get to choose a suit and it stays the favorite suit all the way until the next dominance check. If you don't buy it, it gets discarded, then the favorite suit changes to blue. With this one, if you don't ever buy it and it's discarded, the favorite suit changes to red, which is military. The problem with that is that while the favorite suit is red, all cards have double the cost. So a two cost card suddenly costs four. That's not necessarily great. If I do buy it, uh, then it'll tell me that it tells me that my military cards are always considered favored until the next dominance check, which could mean some bonus actions off of red military cards. So just to clarify, since I'm looking over here at Wakan's tableau, I would not be allowed to have these cards both in my tableau because I can't have patriots from different countries all hanging out together. Wakan, however, has pragmatic loyalty to everyone. And what that means is that she can basically do whatever she wants and be friends with anybody that she wants. It's pretty rough. All right, so now it's our turn. And I have two actions that I could take. Wakan's blowing all of her money, which is good. I might want to help her with that little issue a little bit. Haha. Ha. I also don't want her to get too many more cylinders out than me, so it's another thing that I have to think about. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start picking cards that give me some good actions as well, because it just seems smart. So I'm going to grab this Kandahar card into my hand. I get to take the rupee off of it, and it was free. So that's actually nice for me economically as well. I'm now up to five rupees. I'm going to take this Kandahar card. It's going to allow me to put a road out, but also I can play it later. And when it's in my tableau, it'll let me do a taxation action for to get a little money. And it will allow me to build, which means that if I need to put out more roads or armies and I have the money for it, then I can. So I'm going to take this into my hand. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. And then I think what I'm going to take... I think that I would like this guy because I want to be able to put some spies out. That seems cool. Yes. So I'm going to pay one rupee to this card in order to pick up this guy. So I actually got my rupee back. So that was a good deal for me. So this one will keep me loyal to the British, but I'll have a British Patriot, which is good. It'll give me some influence when we have a dominance check as long as I don't switch. Oops, uh, but it'll let me put out some spies. It'll also change the favored suit to economic, which means that I can take bonus actions off of this card if I play it. So I'm seeing a little synergy, I'll pick these up. But I can't play any of them because I've already taken my two actions. I picked up two cards. I don't get to radicalize like Wakan does. So she gets to go again and she's just gonna keep ratcheting up. So these cards will all go down. I know that I'm good on cleanup because my tableau has nothing in it. And then my hand limit is two. So I have two cards in my hand. I am good to go. So we're gonna move all these down and we'll take some more cards off the draw pile. All right, I'm looking for cards that let me put tribes out, but I'm not seeing any interesting. It'll make this a very different game. All right, so now it's Wakan's turn, and we're going to draw another card for her and see what she does. Okay. 
So once again, we are going to be looking through what Wakan can do. Her first action that she's going to want to try to do is radicalize an intelligence card. So that is actually something that she's able to do. Intelligence cards, as we noticed, are the ones that have blue on them. And this is the only intelligence card in the market. Although actually, Wakan cannot radicalize that intelligence card. And the reason that she cannot radicalize that intelligence card is that she, uh, she doesn't have any money. Oops. Okay, so she actually cannot radicalize the intelligence card. She, she doesn't have the cash to do it. So this is the only intelligence card that's even available to her. She can't afford it, so she can't do it. Move. Wakan doesn't move spies and she doesn't have anything to move, so she's not gonna do anything there. And then we're just gonna have plain old radicalize. So now we know that if she can radicalize a card, she's gonna go to the top row and she would try to buy something that's worth five, but she has no money. So she's going to buy the leftmost legitimate purchase card for her. That's going to be this one. So she's going to radicalize this Persia card right here. So she's going to pay zero for it and she's just going to pick it up. She's going to put it in her tableau. Under no circumstances do we want to go Russian right now because she's getting a bunch of Patriots. So what that means is that Wakan is now going to put out two armies and that's what she gets to do from this card so she's gonna about two russian armies they'll be our first armies on the board however i want to note that even though this is a russian card that puts out russian armies wakan does not have to do what the card says on that she's gonna put out two armies that are her pragmatic loyalty on this card which does happen to be russian i'm british so she won't put out any british armies so she's gonna put out two russian ones so she's gonna put two Russian armies in Persia because we drew a card that is a Persian card. And that's what she'll do for that action. So now we're gonna go back up. Can she radicalize an intelligence card? The answer is still no. Can she move? No, you can't move an army without a road, FYI. So no, she cannot move. And then can she radicalize? Yes, she absolutely can radicalize. She has no money. So what she's gonna be able to radicalize is this Herat card right here. So she's gonna take the coins from the Herat card. She's going to play it. And then she is going to get to put out two roads. I'll give you two guesses what nationality they're gonna be because her pragmatic loyalty here is Russian. So the way that we know how she's going to place Rhodes is by looking up here. So we know that her priority would have been Herat, where we are now. The second one is Persia. So she's going to put a road to Persia. And then she's going to put a road to Transcaspia. So she would basically go around with her roads in a circle and just make roads everywhere. So this is interesting. So now we're at a point where if there were to be a dominance check, which thank goodness there is not, Russia would win it. Russia has four more blocks out than either of the other coalitions, and that's what it takes for dominance. You lose the game if a score check ends and someone is four points ahead of you or more. So basically, if we had a dominance check right now, Wakan would win. So I have to be careful about dominance and what we're going to do about it. As it stands, however, we just have to do some cleanup for Wakan. So her court size is too big. She has no political cards and she has more than three cards here. So now we are actually going to see what her priorities are going to be as she decides what to discard. So you actually have a Wakan's priorities card. So the first option is non-political. All of these are non-political. Non-patriot, eh, that means that this one she's going to discard because these three are patriots. So basically you just go down her list of priorities until you can determine what to get rid of. So this patriot card is going to discard. So her tableau is back in order. And now we are going to go. So we're going to push all the cards down. And then we are going to play some more cards. Let's put them out. Okay, so let's think about what might be a good plan for me. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to move this down. I'll let you know when I put cylinders out. I just want you to be able to see all my cards. Okay, so I can purchase and play. I think what I will do is I'm going to go ahead and play 
Kandahari Markets, which will allow me to place a British road out on the board. I can place it going any direction I want, so I'm just gonna have it going this way because we might get in a fight in here, you know, good stuff. And then I know that later I might be able to take actions off of the card, so I can tax or build if I so choose. But that's not what I'm gonna do right now. I'm currently eyeing this dude up here. He's a free card and he is gonna let me put out some British armies and he's gonna let me take battle and move actions. So to me, he seems like he might be a good investment. What I'd like is some purple cards or some cards that increase my hand size, but that doesn't seem to be in the cards just now. I don't wanna play this guy yet because I wanna purchase that other Patriot before something goes wrong. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this guy for free. So I had paid no rupees, so that's good. And then that was my whole turn. I played a card and I drew a card. So as you can see, this is a little bit rough for me because Wakanda is like growing fast. So these guys will all come down. My cleanup is fine because I have fewer than three cards in my tableau and I only have two cards in my hand. So we're all good on that. We'll put out, uh oh, a dominance check. So now a score check is coming up and I know it and Wakanda and I are gonna have to scrap to see who can get it. So this brings a new rule into play. There's a rule called Wakan's ambition. And what that means if, is that if Wakan can buy the Domino's check and get more points than you, not tie you, get more points than you, she will buy it. So that basically forces her to up the tempo for you as you play. So now Wakan's card choices are going to change a little bit as well. So when there's a Domino's check in the market, what happens is she will buy the Dominus check if she can beat you, which we discussed. However, she's also going to now start choosing the cheapest Patriot loyal to the Dominant Coalition, which there isn't one anymore because Russia is no longer four ahead. It's only three because I put this road out, so I've bailed myself out of that one. But if no Coalition is Dominant, she's going to choose the cheapest card with the most spy and or tribe impact icons. So now Wakan's going to be looking to put out spies. And sadly, I have let this cobble card hit the end of the row and it's going to let her do it. No. Oh, that's rough for me. This is not, victory is not looking promising, y'all. All right, so first we're going to go ahead and actually draw the Wakan card, since that's what you do. Okay. So, the first action she would take is, if no coalition has dominance, radicalize the card that would place the most spies and or tribes. No surprise there. So, actually that card is right here and it's free for her. Oh man, so she's just gonna radicalize this card right now. So she's gonna put this cobble card out. That means that she's gonna put two spies on it. She's gonna put an Afghan army out. It says so in the card, but also here. So it's gonna go into cobble. And then she is going to change the favored suit right here on this card over here to the red one, which means that cards now cost twice as much to buy. That's not necessarily that bad for me right now because I can change the suit next turn, but for her, this might actually have some interesting repercussions. So that was her first action. If military cards are favored, oh no, radicalize the highest ranked military card. Okay, so Wakan actually does not have enough money to do that. So she won't. She won't radicalize the highest ranked military card because it's over here. And she only has three rupees. She needs four in order to pull that one off. Okay, so now what's going to happen is she's going to just radicalize. She would be going for the one that has the most spies and or tribes to put out. But again, this is the only one that puts any of those on the board and she can't afford it. All right, so now we're going to figure out which card she's going to take. She's going to try to take one that's zero value. And this red arrow is pointing to top. So she's going to take the cheap card on the top, right over here, zero value card. The other thing I've been totally forgetting to do, and I'm sorry, this should matter for movement, is that she's gonna put this card in on the left of her tableau. So she moves them to the right and to the left. So left, right, I should have been more careful about that. Apologies. All right, so she will now get to put out another road. Her pragmatic loyalty this time is Afghan. So she's gonna put out a road in Herat. She will put one from Herat to Persia because that's the first symbol that shows up on here that matches one that neighbors where she is. Okay, so as you can see, this board's starting to fill up most excitingly. So the issue is that probably nobody's gonna be able to get dominance. We're gonna have to see. All right, so now I have to choose what I wanna do. 
But first we have to do some cleanup for our buddy Wakan. So Wakan is way over her court size. She has to dump two cards. We know the first one that she's gonna get rid of is um, this non-patriot right here for Hit Rod. So this will go. She has to get rid of one more card and we're gonna decide which one it's gonna be. She's got all patriots. But she'll then go for the one with the fewest spies. So now she's going to get rid of this Persian one that has no spies on it. And now she's just got a bunch of intelligence cards. So she's all cleaned up. I am going to do the market row. So now we'll move all these down. Put some cards out. Ooh, I'd really like this. That's a lot of tribes. So now I have to figure out what to do. Do I want to do something about this event? Do I want to, because the thing is if this, if the favored suit changes, she'll get a bunch of bonus actions next turn and I really don't want that to happen. So I may need to do something about that event or else Wakan's gonna whoop me really bad. All right, so I think the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and play a card. I am going to put down Eldridge Pottinger and he and I are gonna have a good time because there's gonna be some spies. So I have to put the spies out on the Punjab because that is the only place that they can, they have to go out on my card because I'm the only one with a Punjab card out. It's also gonna change the favorite suit to economic, which is good because I'm gonna get to take a bonus action off of Kandahar over here in a second. Not bad, not bad. So the other thing I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and grab this because I just don't want Wakanda to have all those bonus actions, just no. So I'm gonna purchase it and I'm gonna declare that the economic suit is the favorite suit all the way to the dominance check because that is what this card allows me to do. I can declare a suit and it stays favored all the way up to the dominance check. So I'm probably glad that I did that because otherwise Wakan is gonna whoop me, but she is already. <laughs> so that's my two actions, that's all I can do. Uh, as you can see, I'm much more limited in terms of my capabilities. So my court size is fine, my hand size is fine, I have one card in my hand, and I actually do get to take a bonus action if I want to. So over here on my Kandahar card, so I could take a tax action if there was a, if there were rubies in the market, but there aren't. Otherwise, if you want to tax players in a region, you have to rule it, which I don't, and they would have to have a card that was also located in that region, which Wakan does not. So the tax action is not on the books for me, nor is the build action, because this little scroll right here with the 246 means that you can build stuff. However, in order to build, you have to actually control a region, which again, I don't. So I would love to take a bonus action, but I cannot. So let's clean up after me. My court size is fine, my hand size is only one. And now let's go ahead and redo the markets for Wakan to ravage. So one of the reasons I didn't want to take anything from this row is that Wakan has three rupees and she would absolutely buy that dominance card if she could. She can't, but if she could, she would because right now she would win. She's got way more cylinders out than me and none of these empires is gonna win on a dominance check. So I am not gonna be getting the most points this turn. All right, so let's turn her card over and see what she'll do this time. Oh, Wakan, Wakan, what will you do? Okay, so Wakan's first instinct is going to be to betray. Wakan does not have any betray actions, so she won't. Battle on the highest priority court card with the most spies where Wakan also has at least one spy. So Wakan and I don't have any spies together on court cards, so again, we won't battle. So what she'll do is, once again, radicalize. Let's see, so because there is a dominance card in the market, then, well, she's already gonna do it anyway. It works out just fine for her. So Wakan, either because she, because of Wakan's ambition, she would buy this card anyway. She's gonna wanna put out the most tribes and spies. So she's going to go ahead and purchase this Persia card for three. And she will put him in her tableau. Let's see, bottom, she'll put him on the right. She can't keep them all out though because her tableau is too big. So at least, you know, thank, thank goodness for small favors. And now once again, she's going to radicalize because she can't betray, she can't battle, so she will come and radicalize again. This time she can't buy from this row because she's already bought. 
So she's just gonna take this little cobble card right here and she's gonna put out two more Afghan roads. So in Kabul, she will put one going this way and then she'll, she'll actually go around. So she'll put her next one on Kandahar. So this was her priority and then she'll go around. All right, so Wakan has radicalized two cards and now she has to clean up her tableau again. She's gonna discard this one for sure. Then she's going to end up dis discarding the one that has the fewest spies. So this guy will go, Joseph Wolf. And now Wakan is down to three court cards as she should be, but oof, my goodness. So now our dominance card is gonna move closer, but Wakan has no money. Thank goodness for that because we can put this off a little longer and try to fight her on it. And then we have an event and another card. Okay, so now what am I gonna do? I'm sitting on some cash, but more importantly, I need to get some dudes out. I'd really like to rule a region as well. All right, so this might not work at all, but I'm gonna try to get clever. So I think that we might be able to push Afghanistan over the edge if I don't change now. It depends on what her next card is, but I'm gonna take a risk. So I'm gonna pick up this cobble card for my first action as a purchase, but I'm not gonna play it. And then I'm gonna do one more action. So the way that movement works in this game is that you can move your spies like around clockwise or counterclockwise. So, all right, what I think I'm gonna do is for my second action, I'm gonna do something different from buy and place cards, guys. All right, so I am going to move one of my spies around. I have a two movement card. So this action over here has two flags, which means I can move two times. So I'm gonna do one, two. And that's what I'm gonna do. And then I have a bonus action over here on this little economic card, so I can tax the market. I don't rule any areas, but I can still get some money. So I'm gonna just take that one, that rupee. Just swipe some rupees off the market. So just to explain what happened, the first time I purchased a card, for my second action, I used a move action on my blue card. And for my third action, I took a bonus action, which doesn't count as one of my main two, in order to swipe a rupee in this taxation action from the market. Now everything's gonna move down. So my hand and court size are both fine. We're gonna come down. Wakan still can't buy that dominance check and I'm just waiting. Okay, so now we have a cobble guy. I would like to buy that at some point because that puts a tribe out to be really good. But priorities, priorities. Okay, so now what's gonna happen is Wakan's gonna go. What are you gonna do, Wakan? What are you gonna do? Okay, so if Wakan has fewer spies than another player, radicalize the highest ranked intelligence card. No! Okay, so Wakan does not have fewer spies than me, but the worst thing is that this next action says battle on the highest priority court card with the most spies where Wakan also has at least one spy. Oh man, so Wakan is gonna use her battle action to kill my spy and send him home. Bummer, 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 bummer. And that's one of her actions. And then the next thing she's gonna do is radicalize. So she's gonna prioritize the top row and she's gonna put something in on the left. And the thing that she's gonna put in is this zero card that she can buy because she can't, she doesn't have three rupees. So she's gonna come over, she's gonna get this cheapie. She's gonna put down one Afghan road so her priority would have been here. So she'll put one facing Transcaspia. This is actually not too bad for me. Let's see what we can pull. Could take a bonus action because she has an economic card out, but she is too poor to do either one, so it doesn't really matter. And her second action was to radicalize this card. So, so we're taking her two actions. She battled over here, she radicalized this card. She can't take any bonus actions with it because she doesn't have the money to. And now she's gonna reduce her court size. So this is going to go, because it's the card that is gonna be her lowest priority. It's not political, it's not a patriot, it has no spies. And that will be Wakan's turn. We're getting so close to this forced dominance check, eek. So I'm doing everything that I can to just kind of like hold off on that. Okay, we got another Persia card. 
All right, so now I have to decide what I want to do. I do not want to pick up that dominance check. That is for sure, because Wakan would still beat me at this point. What I'm kind of hoping is that I can tip the favoring balance over to Afghanistan and they'll become dominant. Because if they do, then I could win. So I was trying to come over here and get her Patriot. So basically if I play this card, I become Afghan as well in my loyalties and I can build two roads right then. So what I'm trying to do is sneakily maneuver Wakan so that she doesn't oppose me on this plan, which works because she put a road out for me, not knowing that I was planning a switch. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this card for free. I've got my eye on Cobble, which is what's going on here. I'm gonna grab this for free. And then this, I may regret this, but I'm gonna pay four. Oh, do I wanna do this? Yeah, to buy this guy. Because he'll increase my tableau size when I put him down. Uh, and also he is going to help me get a tribe out. If I become Afghan, I can rule Kabul with his assistance. So that's something that I might like to do. So for my cleanup, I'm actually okay. So my tableau size is correct. My hand size would be too big, except that it's not because I have two of these blue stars here. So it's two plus the number of two blue stars. So I'm at four in my hand and that is still correct. And now it is Wakan's turn. We're gonna set the market back up for her. Oof. And then this will slide down. I should have done the other one first, but whatever. All right, so let's see what Wakan would like to do. What do you want, Wakan? All right, so she's gonna radicalize the highest ranked political card. She can't, she doesn't have any money. Ha, so she can't get this guy, which is good because I might like that guy, but she can't get him. And then let's see if military cards are favored, which they are not radicalize the highest ranked military card, and then she'll just radicalize. So what we know is that Wakan is poor. So what she's going to start with is she's just going to radicalize this, the one on the top left, because that's all she can do. She's going to take this Punjab card. She'll put them in your, her tableau. She'll put out a spy. She'll put it on mine this time because we both have a Punjab card and she can come see me, which is what she would prefer. And then she is going to, that's it. All right, so Henry Rawlinson just hangs out for now. She'll have to reduce her tableau size again, but that's okay. And then she, once again, can't radicalize the highest ranked political card. She's too poor. Um, if military cards are favored, ah, Here's the real problem. Now that she's got that money, she can afford to buy the dominance check. My plan did not work, guys, I failed. So Wakan is actually gonna come here. She's gonna buy this. And she's gonna screw me over. Oh man. All right, so no coalition was dominant at this time. Oh, so we're gonna get to score based on the number of cylinders out and Wakan is absolutely smoking me at that. So basically on a failed dominance check, a failed dominance check is when one of these empires fails to be dominant, which is happening right now. What will go down is that then the, it goes to personal power. So Wakan gets three points for having the most cylinders out and I get one point for having the second most cylinders out. So she's not ahead of me by four yet, but if I lose another dominance check this way, she will win the game. So I felt like this is just a taste of how a game of Pax Premier works. I thought that you might like to see a detailed overview of round and how we play, even though I did not play well, and I'm sorry, I did try to fight Wakan and uh, I, I lost. Wakan smokes me pretty regularly. So if you wanna see somebody win one, Ricky Royal has a playthrough where he's explaining his own solo mode that he developed. So that's some pretty impressive strategic play. He also talks about some cool like errata and like variants and all those sorts of things that you can get only from someone who's made the game. So I highly recommend you check that out. But if you want like the slow walk through a round of Pax Mir, I hope this video was very useful to you. If you found it particularly useful, feel free to leave me a coffee. A link is in the show notes below. And either way, I hope I see you again soon. Happy gaming.